Hookworms of Dogs and Cats Hookworms are blood-sucking parasites of the small intestines. Most have a hooked anterior end, hence the name. They belong in the superfamily Ancylostomatoidea, family Ancylostomatidae. This video will discuss members of the subfamily Ancylostomatinae, which parasitizes carnivorous hosts like dogs and cats. Common hookworms of dogs and cats include Ancylostoma caninum, Ancylostoma tubiformi, Ancylostoma brasiliense, Ancylostoma ceylanicum, and Uncinaria stenocephala. Ancylostoma caninum causes hookworm disease in dogs, particularly in the warmer tropical and subtropical regions. And the counterpart in cats is Ancylostoma tubiformi. Both of these are armed with three pairs of teeth in their buccal capsule. Ancylostoma brasiliense parasitizes both dogs and cats. And Ancylostoma silanicum parasitizes dogs, cats, and people. Both are armed with two pairs of teeth in their buccal capsule. And finally, Uncinaria stenocephala parasitizes dogs, cats, and even foxes in cooler regions of the world. And it's armed with one pair of teeth. Transmission. Hookworms can be transmitted via ingestion of infective larvae. And similarly to Toxocara infection, transmammary transmission. More info about Toxocara in the i-card above. And finally, skin penetration which is followed by somatic migration, and in puppies less than 3 months old, tracheal migration, where they are coughed up and swallowed into the gastrointestinal tract. In the small intestines, the larvae mature and suck blood. In older dogs, the larvae go into an arrested development in the tissues, and during pregnancy, wake up and travel towards the mammary glands. Clinical Findings There are several forms of hookworm disease. Per-acute hookworm disease occurs in puppies or kittens infected via the transmammary route. The pup would appear healthy in the first week of life, then slowly deteriorate in the second week as the blood is sucked out of it by these worms. One adult Ancylostoma caninum can suck as much as 0.1 milliliters of blood in the span of 24 hours. Now imagine how much blood loss 50 or 100 hookworms would do in a very small puppy. An acute normocytic normochromic anemia that turns into a hypochromic microcytic anemia is characteristic. Mucous membranes would appear very pale, and they become very weak and emaciated. Their poop would appear very dark because of the blood loss. But no hookworm eggs are to be found until 16 days of age at least. Prognosis is often guarded to poor in these deteriorating pups. Acute hookworm disease occurs in older pups and dogs upon sudden exposure to a large number of hookworms. Similar clinical signs of hookworm anemia in dark tarry feces occurs. And response to treatment is much more favorable in uncomplicated cases. Then there is chronic compensated hookworm disease. Chronic meaning the disease has been there for a long time. And compensated meaning that the body has adjusted to the disease burden. This is usually asymptomatic. However, if the dog gets sick from something else, they can have secondary, decompensated hookworm disease. The clinical signs worsen, and they become extremely anemic and emaciated which may kill the dog secondary to the other disease that is ailing it. Other clinical signs Verminous pneumonia may occur when large numbers of larvae travel to the lungs. And dermatitis may be seen in those infected via skin penetration. In humans, a self-limiting condition known as cutaneous larva migrants, or more commonly, creeping eruption, occurs where the larvae of many of these hookworms, but more frequently Ancylostoma brasiliense, crawl under the skin.
As the larvae move under the skin, they leave behind a raised trail of red and intensely, or some would describe intolerable, itching eruption. Yeah, that's very bad. So yeah, don't get that. Diagnosis is by detection of eggs in the feces. They look like this. Acute anemia in pups 1 to 2 weeks of age is suspect, although the eggs are not seen at this time. Treatment Blood transfusion may be considered for those with severe anemia, as well as supplemental iron with a high-protein diet. Anthelmintic drugs are given to kill off the worms. Deworming puppies and kittens is important, especially given the transmammary transmission of these parasites. This is done routinely starting two weeks of age, and every two weeks thereafter until the puppy is three months old, after which they may receive preventative medication in combination with other drugs that target other parasites. There are a plethora of deworming products in combination with various drugs that target other parasites. Ask your veterinarian which one is right for your pet. To summarize, hookworm disease in small animals can be caused by Ancylostoma caninum, Ancylostoma tubiforme, Ancylostoma brasiliense, Ancylostoma ceylanicum, and Uncinaria stenocephala. They can be transmitted via ingestion, transmammary transmission, and skin penetration. There are several forms of hookworm disease. In humans, a condition known as cutaneous larva migrants, or creeping eruption, occurs when infected percutaneously. And diagnosis is by detection of eggs in feces. Anthelmintics are used to kill the worms, and supportive therapy is done for the anemia. Deworming is important. <laughs>